Welcome to the podcast La Chaise Bleue, the podcast dedicated to the leader of the digital transformation in these days. We're now live from the Hanover Mess, where the partri the partner country is Canada for 2025. It's a pleasure to sit here with Joel Martin from the National Research Council of Canada. Thanks for joining me. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we had a quick discussion, Martin, um, Joel, sorry, uh, from, with about the National Research Council of Canada. It's been there for a hundred years, you, you, you told me, and uh, I want to get to know more about it. I'm very curious to understand the, the purpose and what you guys are working on these days. Cet épisode de La Chaise Bleue vous est fièrement présenté par GLM Conseil, acolyte de la transformation dans votre entreprise à l'ère du numérique. A map of Canada with a bit of uh, the offices of the National Research Council are spread across the country. Yep. We're organized into two parts. One part is our research centers, where we do research of interest to Canada. And we also... Fundam fundamental research or applied thing? Uh, for the most part, our, our mandate is to apply it and transfer it for actual impact in the, in the world, for Canada and the Canadian economy. So that's the research side. We also have a, a uh, Industrial Research Assistance Program, or IRAP. Okay. Uh, IRAP is a system for providing funding, so it's non-dilutive funding, for small and medium enterprises to do a research project. Uh, and... Switch with mine. Okay. <laughs> Uh, to, to do a research project, and this, the IRAP uh, gives these grants okay. to do those projects. And so we foster research in companies as well as doing some research ourselves. Uh, and we're all across Canada. So it's all across Canada, coast to coast, close to the borderline. Where yeah, we within 150 in. kilometers of the border, <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, right. we do have an office in Edmonton and... And in all, we, we have a, actually a, a space on uh, Cambridge Bay, okay. north of Baffin Island. What I'm talking about today, though, is the AI ad adoption, how, yep. we're going to, how NRC, National Research Council, is a, a research technical organization. Uh, and there are many in Germany as well. Mm -hmm. the, uh, it is possible for these organizations to help multiple companies and just raise, raise the capability of all of the economy. To do the AI adoption. Yes. And so one of our research centers is called Digital Technologies Research Center uh, that focuses on algorithms. So that includes AI, machine learning, even quantum algorithms. Okay. Uh, and so that's NRC. And uh, what, I, what I wanted to share with, with people... Is, with everybody here. Yeah, everybody here. <laughs> uh, is uh, the, a, a recipe for AI adoption. Uh, and I guess the first question most other people have is, where do I start from? There are many frustrations. So you don't know what you're going to get out of AI until you've done it. Sure. You know approximately, or you got some guesses... You have to try many experiments. You don't know what it's going to cost in the end. Uh, you, you might not have the data that you need. All AI needs data. Yep. You might not have the compute facilities. You might not have the money. You might not have... There are many of these... The knowledge you don't have. Expertise. You may have the money, the yes. expertise, and the education to know what kind of value can this create within my own company. Yes. And that's one of the things that the National Research Council can offer. We have more than 200 experts in AI who can uh, give that expertise, bring that expertise to a, a, a new problem. Okay. And truly apply it to a business model yes. and to uh, a, a specific company. So you accompany these company in some project? Yeah. So I'll, I'll just take, take a, I'll skip ahead to a very specific example. So this is a very simple example. Okay. Uh, the idea is we're going to bring expertise to the company. We're going to bring compute to the company. We're going to bring the software. We're going to help them understand their data, help them understand the, the business problem. They knew they had a business problem. They were found through the Industrial Research Assistance Program. They were getting funding from them. Yep. And the, we were told, okay, this is a company that could benefit from AI assistance. All right, we come in. The, the problem they had was 
This company, Melt Movement, it's got two O's for moo, movement, <laughs> is a logistics company for milk. They pick up from the farms, deliver to the packagers or to the value-added uh, uh, companies. And because there are so many things changing with the weather, with cows being sick. Humidity, temperature, yeah, name it. Uh, and that's the key problem for them. They tried to optimize using normal optimization techniques, but there are too many variables uh, and AI ended up working. But the, the, what the, their challenge is, is that they would send trucks to the farms to pick up milk. And if there was not enough milk, mm -hmm. then the truck is driving nearly empty. Or if there's too much milk, they can only take so much uh, and the rest spoils. May goes to waste yes. or spores right yes. away, which uh, is terrible. So with, with uh, predictive AI, so not generative AI, which is this new chatbot. Yeah. But predictive AI, they were able to come up with a, an algorithm to, our team was able to come up with an algorithm to predict two weeks in advance and improve their... their what would be the production their, level two weeks in advance based on many, many variables? Many, many variables. Uh, wow. And uh, this, this was a, a notable improvement for the company, saves them money, and they're actually delivering more product now than they were before. Quick question as an entrepreneur, when I do a project with the uh, National Search uh, Council, who owns the, uh, the, the right on this technology? Can the company commercialize yes. the idea or how does it work? So what we'll do for every one of these projects, <clears throat> we will solve your problem, not everybody else's problem. It's your. It's your problem. Uh, and we sign over all rights to the to the software to your company. Really? Okay. That makes it truly even more interesting because the same problem may be encountered in so many farms yeah. in Canada. Definitely. The, absolutely. But, but, but it will be... So, oh, so the, yes, it, they may not have the expertise at these companies to, to commercialize it. Yeah. Uh, but if some other company came and and uh, had a similar logistics problem yeah we would resolve the problem for them with according to their needs it might not it would be very different solution very very interesting project is there any specific field or area of our economy that you guys are more focused on for the years to come okay, in our is... geopolitical uh, uh, current uh, tense so our, our recipe uh, for doing the AI adoption is to bring in the expertise and the hardware and the software and all, a package. Okay. And then we solve a problem for one company and it's whichever company is ready to adopt this kind of solution, but they don't have the expertise in, in house to do it. And it could be across any sector, any sector, any sector. We're going to try now we're, we're building a new version of this recipe for the future because IRAP, Industrial Research Assistance Program, talks to 10,000 companies per year in That's Canada. That's a lot. And we take three months for one of these solutions. It'll take forever to help Absolutely. all 10,000 companies. Almost impossible, yes. even with the AI. Right. <laughs> so to, to take your logistics example, in the agriculture, agri-food sector, many companies are going to have the same problem. So let's get these companies all together in a pre-competitive way mm -hmm. to say we have this shared problem and then our mutualize team the solution i like it and then we solve the problem once yep. and then they take it back to their proprietary systems and their proprietary mm -hmm. data but we've provided one solution for many uh people in many companies in one sector and hopefully we we uh, advantage more companies that way how do you guys do the meshing And making sure you can, you know, find out not one, but two, three, five, ten companies with the same problem. How do you aggregate the needs and the actual company that has it? It must be a challenge. That's why well, I'm asking. It's a challenge. I can tell you what we've done so far. So this is a, a work in progress. We're trying to figure out the best way to do this. We do have the Industrial Research Assistance Program. Yep. Talks to these 10,000 companies across Canada. They keep a database yep. of everyone they talk to. And so if we say, okay, which companies are, are working in the logistics space of agri-food? We, we have that inside NRC already. And we can reach out to those companies and say, are you interested okay. in this? 
So you have your own directory of uh, people. Yes. We had the main challenge they're facing per industry or... Well, that's not necessarily the case. Okay. We, we know quite a bit about many of these companies and where they want to go, but we don't necessarily know that they have, which challenges they have yet. And so another thing that we did, see if I can find... We uh, ran several workshops a year ago, bringing in multiple companies from uh, five sectors, from uh, agri-food agriculture as one sector, health, uh, advanced manufacturing, clean tech, and defense. Okay. Uh, and for each of them, we asked the same, same questions about what do you need for in AI, what, what are your obstacles, etc. And we weren't very surprised with the outcome, the shared... Of course, each sector has some of their own differences from the other sectors. Yep. But overall, there was a need for expertise, specifically AI expertise that uh, the people also understand agriculture. So one person who understands both yep. uh, would be ideal. Which is hard to find. Yes. And <laughs> data sharing was a, sh was a common problem across. So in the logistics case, you want the ships to talk to the trains, to talk to the trucks, uh, and then that make, could make the whole system work better. Uh, we also uh, a shared need for AI compute, but there were different ideas about what that could mean. It could be a centralized high-performance computer or it could be edge computing. Okay. Um, and then the, the complexity of the ecosystem. There are so many partners out there. There are so many things that... It is something to, 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 to manage and to understand the whole ecosystem and make the proper uh, mix and match. And are you going to find... Are you, they don't even speak the same language. So how do you find the AI expertise you need uh, for, for, uh, to make it a sustainable uh, mm -hmm. opportunity? Okay, so this, this is what we found last summer. We're, we're building on this to try to find those shared problems. Uh, and very likely the way we'll do it is find groupings of companies so, that are very similar yep. and uh, get them... We have to be sure that they're willing to work together. I don't know. That you can force it. Uh, you cannot force it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, one question for you, uh, Joel, is um, this is the CVDM question. After our talk, I will explain what the CVDM is to you. But the question is, what would be the one company or organization you would like to meet here in Anovomess? to maybe solve one of your uh, headache or a challenge that you may encounter these days? Or maybe a kind of company, or is there anyone you, 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 you would think, I need to meet with these people to see what they have done, inspire our project based on that, or a supplier? Uh, uh, okay, so one, my, my main goal is to get a better sense of the whole ecosystem. Because so we you need want to be to able meet to, us all. <laughs> yeah, because when, when we bring in companies with challenges, if there's a Canadian company that already addresses that challenge, we're not going to take it. We're the government. We're just there to fill in the cracks. Yep. If there's already a company that does that, uh, we, I want to know about them, or our team needs to know about them. Okay. And we do have e experts in that ecosystem. Uh, there was a company... Uh, I saw a tagline, I had not met them before, called uh, Maya HHT, I think. I interviewed them uh, yesterday, uh, okay. and I know them pretty well. With Rémi especially, I know, I know Rémi Duquette, uh, he's a very, very good guy. Uh, so uh, their tagline was something that they had generated 175 solutions in AI over the last few years, or something like that. Yeah. Which, uh, so what's interesting to me about that is what's their recipe? Uh, how similar is it to what we're doing? Uh, what's their intake? And when should we be sending companies to them? Well, you know what? Maybe I can arrange a meeting with okay. you and Remy, so he can explain <laughs> that uh, to you. Very, very uh, uh, knowledgeable guy. Um, and uh, one last question for you, uh, Joel, is uh, I, I think this subject is so important for the future of Canada that we can mutualize our needs and work together to be stronger as a country. And um, if we would, you know, uh, go and have a coffee, just you and I, after the talk, and uh, I just uh, put my feet on something, and that's a stick of wood. And I find out that this stick of wood is actually a magic stick. And I'm a generous person, and I give it to you. What would be the one wish you would make to 
to change the uh, the mission you have is there anything you would change either internally at the console add something or at the customer site you're using maybe it's a new tool maybe it could be anything money is no object yeah, okay so the what i believe is the most important is additional ai compute in Canada, okay. sovereign AI okay. compute in Canada. We, we have some attempts at this, uh, and one of my slides was just about the, uh, the, the last, the most recent budget had a $2.4 billion package in it. It'll have to be readdressed by the new prime minister uh, after the election. Yep. Uh, but this $2.4 billion sounds like a lot of money. But it's not. But if you compare it to other countries' investments, it's very small. And what it means, there, there are two perspectives to take on this. One is that there, every company is going to need AI compute. Some of it, maybe it's good enough to put on your desktop. You, you don't need something that's a centralized AI training tool. Still. But lots of companies need it. Uh, so you could chop this up into lots of little pieces. The other is you need a lot of compute in order to build your own large language model. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's dominated by the United States and China, yep. with, with some work in France uh, from uh, Mistral. Should we be a, a, com a country that only takes other people's AI, or should we be able to train it? So Canada does have a company called Cohere that is building enterprise large language models, yep. and they are going to build a big AI compute uh, facility. Yep. Uh, using some of this money yeah you, you know what joel i i asked this question to many many people so far during that week and the answer you gave me is the best sovereign ai for canada would be the best use of this magic stick i thank you very much for your answer so i get the stick if you yeah if you, you get, get the it, stick if i, I I'm, <laughs> I'm going to find it for sure even as if it's around the beer tonight i will and i give it to you okay, sovereign ai you. for canada <laughs> thank you very much for the presentation joel nice to meet you nice and i want to talk with you at the cvdm after cet épisode de la chaise bleue vous a été présenté par glm conseil Acolyte de la transformation dans votre entreprise à l'ère du numérique.